Fantastic. What better way to deal with a broken heart than a story on brown dwarves? Yeah, there is a really weird difference between planets and stars and failed stars, brown dwarves and whatnot. I would say we don't know much, and I would say planets could be stars and stars could be planets eventually in a long enough timeline. Nobody knows, man. We're human beings. We live about 100 years. Stars are supposed to live billions of years, so how much can we really know? You know? That's what I'm talking about. So stay tuned, because who knows what we might find. I don't know. Okay, stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. I'm your host, Thor. Where are my brown dwarfs? I'm talking about certain astronomical phenomena. This is a tough problem, so... All right, so let, me, let me get you up to date if I can. We are over at the physics.org again, talking about how brown dwarfs are hiding in plain sight in our own solar neighborhood. Well, if we got brown dwarfs close, maybe we should give them a cooler name they might enjoy. I propose brown sugar dwarfs, and then maybe they'd act sweet. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, cool brown dwarfs are a hot topic in astronomy right now. Smaller than stars and bigger than giant planets, they hold promise for helping us understand both stellar evolution and planet formation. New work from a team, including Carnegie's Jonathan Gag, nah, has discovered several ultra cool brown dwarfs in our own solar neighborhood. And ultra cool means that these are some hep cats who know how to get down. And we shouldn't worry, because they'll probably just get in the groove and everyone will start to move a little bit better, a little bit better to the rhythm, a little bit better to the rhythm. I mean, that's what celestial mechanics is really all about. Dancing. Man, I think doing too many hurricane videos messed me up. Cool brown dwarfs are a hot topic in astronomy right now. Oh, I've read that shit. I don't even know how to read anymore. Brown dwarfs are sometimes called failed stars by scientists who have failed imaginations and are really bad at naming stuff and are really bad at describing things. Like, I mean, a brown dwarf can ignite and become a star. Just like Jupiter can ignite and become a star. Why do you think you guys launched some nukes in there? Trying to ignite that thing. Astronomers have witnessed five massive explosions on the planet Jupiter as fragments from the shoemaker Levy collided with the planet. Larger explosions are expected later this week. They called it the biggest explosion in the solar system for hundreds of years. Half an hour after the first comet fragment went in, the impact was still visible. The cloud of debris spread out for thousands of miles and was over a thousand miles high. The astronomers were jubilant. We're going to see things, and we're going to learn a lot. That's the good news tonight. You know, man, I'm just telling you like it is. They're too small to sustain the hydrogen fusion process to power stars. So after forming, they slowly cool, contract, and dim over time, but still maintain their fluid metal silicate motion of the inner core ocean that gives them auroras. They're crazy, man. So now you've called them dwarfs, you've called them failed stars, and you've said they're dim. Is it really best? piss off a giant brown dwarf, bro. Like, uh, the Huffington Post won't be able to protect you, man. Their temperature can range from nearly as hot as a star to as cool as a planet. And scientists know this because they've licked a lot of them. And their masses also range between star-like and giant planet-like. Oh, they are fascinating to astronomers. And hey, me too. For a variety of reasons. Mostly because they can serve as a bridge between stars and planets in the broken accretion disk model theory, and how the former influences the latter, particular when it comes to composition and atmospheric properties. But much about them remains unknown. Bum -bum -bum. Everyone will benefit from the study of brown dwarfs, because they can often be found in isolation, just like the brown recluse spider, who will put a nasty whelp of hurt on you, which means that we can more easily gather precise data on their properties without a bright star blinding our instruments. Gagney said, who was also a collaborator of the Institute for Research on Exoplanets, IREX, at the Université de Montréal. You see, man, discovering new brown dwarfs will help scientists to better quantify the frequency at which they occur both in our solar neighborhood and beyond. Knowing the abundance 
and distribution of brown dwarfs provides key information on the distribution of mass in the universe. Because that's real important. Once scientists have totally figured out exactly how much mass is in the universe, they'll have all their problems licked. I'm sensing a theme this episode. I can't quite put my finger on it, though. Discovering new brown dwarfs will help scientists to better quantify the frequency at which they occur both in our solar neighborhood and beyond. Knowing the abundance and distribution of brown dwarfs provides key information on the distribution of mass in the universe and on the mechanism of brown dwarf formation. For example, whether they form in isolation all by themselves, or they are ejected by larger planetary systems. Maybe they're scouts. Boom, boom, boom. Brown dwarfs are celestial objects that, that are intermediate. Oh, wait. Stars are formed from clouds of gas that... Yeah, I'm pretty sure all that's wrong, dudes. Sorry about that. And you know, when my dustbuster gets full, its gravitation collapses and it turns into a star. It's really awesome. You should try it. Lonely rogue brown dwarfs. Maybe somebody should set up a dating site for them. I'm telling you, maybe we should try and make friends with them. We gotta give them better names. To that end, the team led by Jasmine Robert of the Université of Montreal believe that although hundreds of ultra-cool brown dwarfs have already been discovered, the techniques used to identify them were overlooking those with more unusual compositions, which would not show up in the color-based surveys generally used. The techniques used to identify them were overlooking those with more unusual compositions, which would not show up in the color-based surveys generally used. Dun 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 dun. So now we got some freak rogue ultra cool brown dwarfs that are in our solar neighborhood. Celestial graffiti. Gravity graffiti. Alright. So they surveyed 28% of the sky and discovered 165 ultra cool brown dwarfs, about a third of which have unusual compositions or other peculiarities when talking about brown dwarfs. Ultra cool means temperatures under 3500 Fahrenheit or 2200 Kelvin. Kill. The search for ultra cool brown dwarfs in the neighborhood of our own solar system is far from over, said Gagne. Our findings indicate that many more are hiding in existing surveys. The story is kind of one big tease, man. It was like you were talking about big brown sugar dwarfs bumping up on our back doors on a dancing party or something. But he didn't mention no brown dwarfs, where they were, what was going on. You know, it's kind of disappointing, man. I'm just, I thought I might have one more good joke, but I don't. Oh yeah, so what happens if the scientists find a, a dorky brown dwarf? They're not going to pay him any attention? You know, that'd be ironic considering scientists might have been a geek himself and to ignore the geeky celestial body just because it's not ultra cool. You know, man, <sighs> peace out. God bless everyone. Now go play some saxophone, Sam. Play again, Sam.